the the aim of the q a it was just to understand the, your method of uh, your work and my english is not very good but maybe uh, you can explain something about uh, all your short film and uh, what motivates you also to to shoot in selfos why this region and uh, how did you arrive to to describe a story of just two characters the father and the son in this next uh, in the in the in the last uh, short film that you made it dahlia and uh, yes maybe we can begin with the story of uh, of these films because it's autobiographical i, I read it but also it's uh, um, very simple and how did you arrive to, did you write a lot of the draft version of the screenplay and how is it also to work with your producer because you made a lot of film with uh, her so uh, him him ah, okay <laughs> it's a guy uh, kari ulfson yes uh, uh, yes maybe. um yeah so like the just to start off with the like quickly go through the other shorts uh it's the, all of the the shorts that i made that i made while at uh, columbia in new york and they like the first one was a sort of forced collaboration like the school makes us work with uh, a co-writer or or uh, like and yeah write with someone else and so that was a very interesting project because i also like wanted to shoot in my hometown and sort of yeah in the in the south of iceland as i've shot all of my films so far there um and yeah, it was very interesting because it sort of made me realize, well, and then the second one, Victoria, was about a, f a woman on a farm. And, and that one sort of, I wrote that on my own. And the, having gone through both, I I sort of knew that I, I didn't, like I wanted to have someone else involved in like my, my thesis film at Columbia, my sort of last film there. And so I had this, autobiographical story of my life where like my uh, my father had to put down a horse and he like uh, he uh, he he told me everything about how how it was going to happen you were not and, there when he killed the horse when you were a child or no yet? i did not see him kill the horse uh, physically i just heard uh, or like yeah he like he me and my brother were like very close to age in age so we like i was like four maybe and he was like five five or six when this happened so i was like very young and then like the way the story is told in in my family is is sort of based around the the conversation that the father and son have in the film where like the son is like uh asks who shot him in regards to the grandfather uh because that is effectively what i did we walked past some decrepit machinery like me and my father and i i pointed at the machines and asked who, who whose machines are these and my father said uh these were your great grandfathers and then we keep walking and we walk for a little like a long while like much longer than in the film actually and the then i turn around and ask and who shot him very confidently and so like this is the story that it was like always told in my family but i felt like i needed to find sort of like the heart of it isn't like like that's a joke effectively um but the heart of it is like the relationship between the father and son and so like i worked a lot like with my writer who like her name is leticia akal and i've worked with her before in other other projects and like we our conversations were really focused around like how how much are we with this like the boy and how much are we with the father and and like sort of finding the like dynamic it was like all the way through like the editing of it we were always having this conversation and like that that is incredibly helpful i think in filmmaking to have a collaborator that like is willing to engage in in the same question of like thousands of times effectively and so when we ended up like the film we ended up with i'm very happy with because it's we i even removed some scenes from the script in the edit because the the sort of structure of it was stronger than like i expected 
so it uh, it functioned really well with the relationship between the father and son if that makes sense and so it and and now it like really carries and there are like moments there are moments where we are fully with the son and there are moments where we're fully with the father because it is sort of both of their stories like we we need to have both of them and also we wanted to one big conversation that we were always having was this conversation about masculinity and Mm -hmm. because like it's the father's like the father's masculinity is both what is keeping like the son from him and the thing that brings them together like the sort of tough masculine trait traits that he has are the like what is not like are the problem in their relationship at the start of the film but when they need to face something like death and like the intercourse all of a sudden those traits become an asset in a way like the way he can just effectively like go through how this works and explain it to the the kid sort of like removing the sort of emotions from it but like allows them to build a connection which then in turn also like you realize like in the scene where you see the father alone watching tv with the kid like that moment is about like sort of the price of having that masculine trait having like like that's the sort of admission of the toxicity of masculinity it's it's the fact that he can't deal with his emotions uh, unless he's completely alone and that that's the only time where we see him actually display like real hard feelings if that makes sense uh, absolutely thank you very much for this uh, nice explanation but do you think that uh, he he don't arrive to deal with his emotions and then uh, he's also v- vulnerable or a lot and the, the film speaks maybe also about the, this kind of things but without words and uh, the, the citadins from, from the city the, 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 the sun it really contrasts with the farmer lives of, of the of the fathers and we project also a lot of things uh, because uh, we have maybe a, 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 a like a series of uh, trying from the father from the apple compote from also the building the fence together anti the horse and uh, without words so i was uh, asking myself did you write a lot of uh, dialogues before or how did you arrive to to let the audience make a nice uh, uh, journey also about your characters and imagine a lot of things about their life who is not showing the film. Yeah, I think we wrote like some, like a considerable amount of dialogue, but we, we always ended up with, because we felt like, like the character of uh, Vic was the father. We felt like that character was not, he's not talkative. He's not gonna, he's not gonna be engaging a lot like even like even just saying like i put apples in it with the porridge like that that to him is like that's him re- reaching like that's him like pushing himself to try and engage and so and the kid is also like sort of out of his element like he's coming from the city from his mom from life that like he's maybe like sort of settled into uh because maybe yeah like i always think of it as like maybe a couple of years since the, the the divorce and so they like he hasn't been a part of this world really like of the farm and effectively like this moment is the like the, the short film is the moment where he sort of gets this world he understands how it functions differently and yeah so he, like that's why the, there's not a lot of talking we, it always it just didn't make any sense for them to communicate verbally uh, until until that like one long scene uh, long shot of them walking which also like th- that's sort of satisfying the because if you keep it away then when you give it to the audience it it always like it feels better and so like it was a par- partially like that sort of ta- technical element of of getting it to be satisfying and partially just didn't it ever make sense for the characters not to like for the characters to communicate a lot 
but this yeah. kind of uh, reunion about uh, the death of the horse, uh, it was mm -hmm. something uh, that arrived quickly in the screen brighter and it will contrast also with the masculinity of the characters or later, how does it come? To... I mean, like that was the anecdote. That was the sort of spark of the idea. So it was sort of, it was sort of a, a reverse engineering scenario where we, where we knew that there was going to be a horse that died. And like there, was, there were versions of the script where like, uh, like the the like the mom was sick or something like that, and like we tried to associate it with that. But it, it, like the like the the most pure element of it was just to have the have it be about the relationship between the father and son. And so, yeah, we we always knew that there was gonna like the spark of the idea is like killing the horse, and then like we reverse engineered sort of how and realized that, oh, actually this is about masculinity. And this is like, so the conversation that me and Letty had, the, the screenwriter was a lot about just like our fathers, sort of like the, a generation like, or two above us, like the, the way those men communicate is different from the way like men in my generation communicate. And so it, we yeah we realized there was this it was like a sort of a love letter to our our fathers in in a way because it was something like just realizing oh this is the world that you come from and that's okay effectively like it's like of course like like the masculinity and like the toxicity of 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 the sort of macho man is is problematic but it's also just like letting the let, letting someone you really care for be like problematic and still be able to like see them as human like which i think is also a very applicable thing for today effectively like just knowing seeing how the world is like more and more at odds just being able to see the humanity in someone you might like have a hard time understanding very very nice it's uh, it's really human and also this uh, message of uh, optimistic uh, acceptation of the of the father between the, all the difference uh, from from the issue of and the of their life it maybe give uh, the the hope that they uh, meet them again after the in in the end of the film but i don't want to spoil it for maybe people who didn't see it uh, again yeah. and uh, yeah, Is I mean, more... yeah, that's the like. It's always I, I, I always try to have uh, like an ending to my films that is both, both happy and sad in some ways. Sort of like it, it, it sort of leaves you with uh, a choice for yourself how you want things to go on. Yeah. And it's really on the close uh, eyes of the child at the end, that this choice is not on the father's, that it was mm -hmm. uh, very, very close. But on the set, how did you uh, work with the lenses? Because sometimes you are really close to the characters and sometimes very wide angles and they are like, like quite lost in the image. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a story border or did you decide in the moment not to be too, too much close to the emotion with a POV of the child who looks at the horse, but really to stay under the cars, feeling his fear. He don't want mm -hmm. to be there. It was like uh, a decision to, to be like distant or... Uh, I think like sort of my 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 innate style of filmmaking is a little bit distant and but so I'm, I'm I think it was more about experimenting with getting closer because like usually I like just staying a little bit back and just seeing how things are happening and and then like I was I was I knew that I wanted those intimate moments to land and so I was always I was always like basically like the conversation with my DP, like what we usually do is we do a Zoom call like this because she's based in Norway and I was in New York when we started planning the shooting and we do a Zoom call and then I like, I basically like run around the like the frame, like trying to explain like, like the kid is here and the father is here and 
like that's how we effectively storyboard and which is a, a great way to work because it's like it's you already have a frame to work with and and you're always like explaining yeah like i wanted this to okay. happen <laughs> yeah so, and so it's very yeah it's very uh, like not not a storyboard per se but it's like we communicate and then like on set like we we're like a, a really well-oiled machine, me and Makka, who shot this one and the last one. Because we, it's, even if like there's an idea on set, oh, maybe we do it this way. It, it's, we really quickly come to like a decision together of whether or not like we should do that or keep to the sort of stick to the plan or sh switch it up. And like very often we, we switch it up and it like, really works like my favorite in in Dalia is like the walking and talking shot the was like decided on set because I had always planned to have it like be handheld and shot both ways so we would have like I would have room to edit but like we realized that the the kid was like strong enough to pull off a, a one take performance and we realized that like we had this like fence that like had this mist behind it and like we had this like perfect location and we were like okay this is gonna be better let's let's do this and we laid down the track and everything and it was like a yeah that was not like not storyboard or anything and i always like i feel like that's for me a lot of uh filmmaking is being able to like you you gotta have a plan but you also gotta be be ready to like throw away parts of the plan at a like without hesitation because like you can find something more interesting or or something like that you can find so you can find stuff especially like basically as i always say, talk about it like this when you're writing you want to write the perfect film and then when you're shooting, you have to not care at all about the writer. You have to only focus on what you have in front of you. And that's all, like, part of that is also just like knowing how much time you have to shoot. And so, yeah, sometimes you may need to make like a decision to cut something that you really like for time. And so like, you need to like know what you have and what you like will do. And then in the editing room, you care about none of the others you don't care about the director or the the writer you just care about like what you have in front of you like all you have is now effectively yeah yeah of course it's really interesting it's uh, you trust yourself a lot i think uh, in, the, in the set but how many people were you on the set and how did you trust them and did you work for the first time or you are like a crew that you work all the time together from short to short um we there's a fair bit of rotation of the crew like we we always need to find someone new because like people are working on other gigs and stuff um but like the core of it is like yeah my like dp my ad and my producer like the four of us are always uh, the, same. Mm -hmm. the same and work really well together and yeah and and effectively like i trust that core group so well that i like i don't i'm not too worried dahlia we had like i think like maybe 15 people i don't know but like somewhere between 10 and 15 i would be my i guess i don't remember okay, okay. it was <laughs> over a year ago yeah and for the child from the horse did you, did you uh, engage some coach or it was like uh Easy. Yeah, we had like a, a horse uh, handler, like an animal handler on set. Um, actually, like the animal handler, like most of the time was my father. Okay. <laughs> because uh, like, yeah, I grew up on a horse farm and everything. And so like he, he handled the horse on, on the set. And then I had like, for the kid, I, I had a friend of mine sort of just spend time with him on set because I knew like we would be like setting up and and like I knew that I needed someone to just like be with him and sort of entertain him and also like and she was like a really like she was really helpful as well because I would have been like like she became his friend while I kept like a, a little bit of a distance like I like 
when we like when I I had like still had authority sort of as a director rather than like having to like work with him as a friend so it was a it was a very interesting dynamic but it was also like the I guess we were all, also became like friends by the last day because I he was like laying in the grass and we were shooting like the final like we were shooting this scene where they put down the horse and uh he he was laying in the grass and he was sort of like tired after like five days of shooting and like he was and he just looked up at me and he said i'm so happy this is not a real movie <laughs> and i go oh what why is that and he goes if this was a real movie this would be a whole summer <laughs> <laughs> meeting yeah. a feature so I was like uh, and my feeling at that point as well like after spending five days shooting this I was like hey I don't disagree with that <laughs> like, I, I agree <laughs> that seems like crazy um, but yeah it's uh, he was a like he was great to work with and also just like he came prepared every day and he was also like yeah. yeah, nice, nice, very nice. But how did you convince also uh, yourself to to shoot all always in in selfos? And uh, because uh, it's also a part of documentary filming on on the farm where people really works. And uh, did you also in your previous film Victoria, uh, you really filmed the 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 cows? It's maybe just a step uh, away. But uh, uh, wh why did you film? this region so much and did you and it's never um saying if it's good or bad to live in this region and how did you choose also the place it was easy to choose a farm it's just because it's the autobiographical or it's really um tell something to you that you want to tell to all the to the audience do you have a, a relationship to of love with your country or it's more a relationship of uh, distance or what it uh, um, I mean, all the all of these three films were made while I was in New York, so I guess they were like sort of uh, in in some ways dealing with. I mean, the first one is also just like effectively about leaving your hometown, yeah, uh, exactly. leaving the comfort of of your own like domain, if, if that makes sense. And so, I mean, that makes sense if, for like a first year film student in New York, uh, um, but and then. Mm -hmm. And then, like the second film was about like, uh, like I always think of that as like a yeah, like a love letter to my mom. Like she's the, the like works on the farm, and like there's even one shot in Victoria where it's like where she's like doing like the cows, like putting the like things on the udder, and she like that's like my mom's hands appear in the film for like a brief second really? because yeah, and and so that was just like out of convenience, like shooting on my mom's farm. And then, like Dahlia, we actually like didn't film around Selfos. It was like way further east, but in the still in the south of Iceland. And it's like a region that I like. I used to work in a national park close by there, and I just knew effectively like the I wanted the exterior locations to have like flat land, and then like really sudden mountains, like walls of mountains, and because uh, like that that to me feels like like the the stoic character of the father with the sort of uh walls against the emotions so like it was like i wanted the location to speak to his character as well like and so i yeah did use like i, I went further east because i knew that that region had that like specific geographical element of, of flat land and sudden mountains mm -hmm. and uh yeah i'm really happy we did that because it's like a beautiful place and it also like really works like in the in the in this shot where where the kid walks to the grave we like i use this like a zoom and the dolly to make the mountains come closer as he goes to the grave so it's just like it's it's always like yeah, the mountains matter a lot. Uh, and I think that's just, yeah, I think that's generally um, sort of where I come from. I, and also like Selfos, like shooting my first film in Selfos was because 
um, like the, the text that the guy reads in the first film about Selfos, that is literally the text in the Lonely Planet. Like it used to be the text about Selfos in Lonely Planet. They updated the book since, but like it used to be like literally witlessly ugly and like very derogatory of the town. And so it was like, and I, I kind of agree, like Selfos is not a it's, a, it's an ugly town in a beautiful country, effectively. And so I wanted to really like, that's why I wanted to shoot there as well, because I that wanted to big. like make something beautiful out of the sort of ugly town that I, that I know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's, it's, it's really interesting. How did you arrive to these results? And it's really nice also to, to feel it. Um, they go mm -hmm. and the, 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 to the um, feet uh, where the, the fields where they play soccer. And uh, it's really mm -hmm. nice to, to feel it. Uh, uh, close to your character and we empathize a lot. 